let's go on to the story we are supposed to be talking about, which is what was going on in Tenerife with the missing teenager, Jay Slater. And let's get straight to it with uh, one of my favourites, Peter Blexley, former Met Police detective. Peter, they could have really done with your help, I think, over in Tenerife. I mean, I've been following this story, you know, around the houses, and I've come to my own conclusions. But let's just go straight to what your conclusions are. I think you and 64 million other people in the UK have come to their own conclusions. If the traffic on social media, which is vast, is anything to go by. Um, and this story, of course, has opened itself up to so much speculation because there are so many aspects to it that are very much more than the facts as they were first released. And nearly three weeks ago, it was a 19-year-old teenager who's a Brit, has gone missing. And then the story grew and grew and grew. And every day there is complexity being added to it. There is more murkiness being added to it. As certain characters within this drama are, are discovered to be, shall we say, less than savoury, and some of them downright criminal. But why were those two guys who he went back, he, he met met these guys there apparently, there have been other the allegations that perhaps when he was seen carrying that little uh, black bag with the strap at all these parties, perhaps he was uh, vending certain items, uh, but we don't know. Uh, but what we do know is he went to the Airbnb with two characters, one of which we now know was a convicted drug dealer, not just sort of, you know, a small time cannabis pusher, but someone who got, was it, nine years sentence, someone who's really not, not the kind to be messed with. There's something about a missing Rolex going on. He's seen leaving that Airbnb, he could have gone down the road to a village straight away where there was people, there were bars, there were restaurants, public transport. He knew the next bus was coming in two hours. Instead, he hot foots it up a mountain into the middle of nowhere. That to me seems like someone who doesn't want to be found. He doesn't want to be seen. Well, hot footing it into the mountains is, of course, the working hypothesis to use a British policing expression, or the theory that the Spanish police, the Guardia Seville, worked on for two weeks while they conducted their searches in that very mountainous and difficult terrain without finding any trace of Jay. I think the Guardia Seville chose that theory because it suited them. So, OK, there were indicators that that might actually have been what have happened, the low battery, where his phone pinged from, he had no water, and the conversation that he apparently had with his friend. So those pointers would indicate that that was po quite possibly where he had gone. But there was so much else to this story that should have been quite properly and thoroughly explored. Now, the Tenerife police, of course, some have a, shall we say, colourful reputation, and some of them are reputed to be quite fond of a few euros that might not necessarily have been paid directly into their bank account by their employer. However, what the, the, the mayors and all the kind of establishment of Tenerife want people to do is to keep going there and spending their money, just like the drug dealers want people to keep going to Tenerife and spending their money. And this story, I think what it has highlighted is that, like with so many other places, in the costas on southern Spain, there's mafia, there's gangsters, there's criminals, there's drug dealers, and I will be looking elsewhere for my summer holiday location. It is interesting, isn't it, that these two guys who are at the Airbnb are allowed to fly home, the Spanish police straight away, or Tenerife police straight away, go, nothing to see here, they just said he had come, there was May, they gave him someone to stay for the night and they bid him farewell in the morning and oh, nothing to do with us, and then flew home early, then they didn't look into or fingerprint or anything in that Airbnb property. Nothing, like you said, nothing was done in that regard. You're right. Oh, poor kid, took a load of drugs, a bit drunk, wandered off into the terrain and got himself lost. Oh, well, you know, shame. Um, I mean, what the allegations you're making is basically there might be uh, powers that be with um, you know, a, a finger in the pie, so to speak, when it comes to how all of this is being coordinated yeah. for their own interests. Is, is, is quite extraordinary. His mother, of course, received that Snapchat message, didn't she? Uh, and the the first thing she did is come out and say, look, you need to be doing something about this because I've got a Snapchat message saying, you won't see your boy again. He owes me a load of money. 
and that seems just been like, oh well, shut up. She don't know what she's talking about, and 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 that was sort of shut down. Then there's this funny GoFundMe for like thirty thousand pounds, very specific amount to be asking for. You don't pay the Tenerife police to do their investigation. So why else, literally, the moment he disappears, do they need £30,000? I mean, what is your take on the lot of this, Peter? Well, the GoFundMe has topped £50,000 today. I checked it only just an hour or so ago. And we know that two plain clothes Tenerife police officers were seen coming out of the Airbnb this week, over two weeks after Jay had disappeared. And they had forensic overshoes over their date shoes, for want of a better expression. Now, with regards to the collection, preservation and retention of forensic evidence, any experienced detective or forensic scientist will tell you, you only get one chance to get it right. Were they going back to that property two weeks perhaps after it might have been thoroughly cleaned in readiness of more clients? Are the police now thinking, oh, well, there was so much that we could have done, should have done, but didn't, that we'll try and minimise any future embarrassment? Or are they going to maintain their current position, which is that the search is over, they've got nothing more to say about the matter, would everybody kindly go away? Because I think there's one or two things here. The Guardian Seville, the Spanish police in Tenerife are either incapable or unwilling to solve this story. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I've heard a lot of people say it should have been investigated as a murder investigation rather than just a missing person and misadventure from the start. Peter Blexley, thank you ever so much. I'm sure this is not the last we're going to hear of this story. The British people are a tenacious lot. They want to get to the bottom of this. So uh, let's see how this continues to unfold.